Hi, this is Mrs. LaBarbara. This is Regents Physics Chapter 7, Work, Power, and Energy Video 2. Today's topic is work and power. The objectives are note definitions and equations for work, power, and energy. No kilowatt hour is a unit of energy. Understand the area and the force versus displacement graph represents work. Understand the relationship between work and energy. Also understand power is a time ratio quantity. Be able to calculate work using force versus displacement graph. Be able to calculate power given work and time, force, distance and time, or force and average velocity. Uh, force versus displacement graph. So the area under a force versus displacement graph is work done by the force. For example, if you are given a graph looks like this, you are asked to figure out the work done by one meter. What do you, how do you do it? Well, you can figure out the area. That area, area represents work. So a block is put along a table with 10 Newton force over one meter. What is the work done? Work is equals to force times dis, uh, distance. One, uh, it's 10 Newtons times one meter, which is 10 joules. This 10 Newton is the height. This one meter is the base. So the height times base, that's the area of rectangle. That gives you the area. Area is work. We have also learned the other area quantities. In velocity versus time graph, the area is displacement. In uh, force versus time graph, the area is the impulse. Now here is force versus displacement graph, the area is work. Example, a box is pushed to the right with a varying horizontal force. The graph below represents relationships between applied force and the, the distance the box moves. What is total work done in moving the box six meters? Well, you can use work done, work equals force times distance, except over here, the, the force is not constant. So that's kind of hard. So another way to do it is to find area. So we can figure out the area under this graph. This is a trapezoid. For those of you who are not familiar with the equation for trapezoid, you can use the rectangle plus the triangle. So your area should be 27 joules. Work is a scalar quantity. So the sum of work is algebraic sum, not a vector sum. For example, a student does 300 joules of work pushing a card three meters due east, and then does 40 joules of work pushing a card four meters due north. What is the total work done? Well, this, air, this direction has nothing to do with work because work is a scalar quantity. To find the total work, you simply add 340. The total work done is 340 joules. Energy in work. What is energy? Energy is the ability to do work. So how do you gain energy? So when a positive work is done, the object's energy increase. That's how you gain energy, which means it is able to do work on other objects. For example, if you apply a force to lift a wrecking ball, you did a positive work. Right, the wrecking ball now will be able to do work on the building. On the other hand, a negative work decreased the object's energy and diminished its ability to do work. For example, the bricks of the building does negative work on the wrecking ball. It stops the wrecking ball and it diminishes its ability to do further work on the building. Now it's stopped, it can't work anymore. It can't wreck the building anymore. Power. Power is the rate at which work is done. It is a work time ratio. Mathematically, it is computed using the, this equation. Power equals work over time. We also learn other quantities over time. Velocity is displacement over time. Acceleration is change velocity over time. Those are all quantity over time ratio quantities. The standard metric unit for power is watt. One watt is one joule over a second. Same, a joule is Newton times meters over a second. Newton, remember new, Newton is ma, is kilograms times meters over a second squared. Times meter per second, it gives you kilograms times meter squared over a second cubed. So all machines are typically described by a power rating. For example, a 60 watt light bulb indicates 60 joules of electrical energy is transferred to light energy every second. A high power car 
indicates that it can be accelerated very rapidly. Some people are more powerful than the others. That's because they can do the same amount of work in less time or more work in the same amount of time. Let's take a look at this example. Ben Pami Iron elevates his 80 kilogram body up the two meter stairwell in 1.8 seconds. What is his power? Let's think about it. for him to elevate his um, his body up the stairwell, the minimum force he has to apply is his weight and his weight is mg. So that is the force he applies. So power is work. Work equals force times dis distance. And the force is his weight. And the distance is 2 meters divided by the seconds. So after you calculate it, you should have 871 watts. Another equation for power. Power equals work over time. Work is force times dis distance over time. Now, uh, we can rearrange this equation, put a force in front, then times distance over time. Distance over time is velocity. So power equals the force times the velocity. So power means force is how strong, strong, both strong and fast means more powerful. So beware, P represents power. That's capital P. Lowercase p repre represents momentum. Capital W again represents work and lowercase w represents weight. Now let's take a look at this example. So two students, Will and Abel, and Ben Pumpy Iron are in the weightlifting room. Will lifts 100 pound barbell over his head 10 times in one minute. Ben lifts 100 pound barbell over his head 10 times in 10 seconds. So which student does most work and which student delivers the most power? You have to explain your answer. First is work. Work equals force times distance. So since the force is the same, both are 100 barbells, 100 pound barbells. How about the distance? Both lift over 10 times. So the distance has to be the same also. So therefore they must do the same amount of work. Now, which one delivers most power? The one used less time delivers most power. So who delivers Ben pumping iron only used 10 seconds. So Ben has more power because he used less time to do the same amount of work. Another example, when doing a chin up, a physics student lifts her 42 kilogram body a distance 0.25 meters in two seconds. What is the power delivered by the student's bicep? Let's see, power equals to uh, work divided by time. Now, again, for the, for the student to lift her body, the minimum force she has to use is her weight to overcome her weight. So power is the weight times the distance divided by time. So power is 51.5 watts. Let's take a look at another example. A 5.8 times 10 to the 4 watt elevator motor can lift a total weight of 2.1 times 10 to the 4 Newton with a maximum constant speed of what? So we know the power, we know the force, we're trying to find the speed. So you have to use this equation, power equals to force times V. So to solve for V, V equals to power divided by force. So power divided by force is 2.76 meters, which is closest to 2.8 meters per second. Another unit you probably um, will see sometimes is called kilowatt hour. Kilowatt hour, you probably see kilowatt, that's power, right? But this kilowatt hour is actually a unit for energy. This is power times time. Power times time is a unit for energy. Your household monthly electric bill is often expressed in kilowatt hours. One kilowatt hour, that's power times time, is the amount of energy delivered by the flow of one kilowatt electricity for one hour. So use conversion factor to show how many joules of energy you get when you buy one kilowatt hour of electricity. So we know one joule is one watt times one second, right? What is one kilowatt hour is how many joules is that? So one kilowatt hour is one kilo is 1000 watts. 
hour is 3600 seconds so 1000 times 3600 that that is 3.6 million joules that's how many joules of energy in one kilowatt hour that's it for today thanks for watching see you next time